Good evening, everyone. My name is Harisha Gajam, and I'm working as a product executive in the marketing department of Hetero Healthcare. On behalf of Hetero Healthcare, I would like to welcome you all to this webinar on HIV and aging challenge. Before we proceed with this today's agenda, I take this opportunity to brief on Hetero Healthcare, which has been a strong partner with HIV experts across the globe. We mark more than 25 years of journey in HIV management. It started with the beginning of manufacturing and exporting of APIs and finished formulations of antiretroviral drugs. Today, hetero supplies one third of the global requirement of antiretrovirals. Apart from HIV, hetero was majorly involved in tackling the national emergencies such as swine flu in 2005, or as latest as COVID-19 epidemic. This was possible only due to strong R&D team and state-of-art manufacturing facilities that ensured seamless supplies of medicines. 5th June is HIV Long-Term Survivor Awareness Day, which reminisces the long-term survivors of the epidemic and raises awareness of their needs, challenges, and journeys. The goal is to prioritize on improving the quality of life for long-term survivors and older adults with AIDS, as well as overcoming other non-AIDS-related physical and mental challenges. To discuss this further in detail, I would like to invite a speaker, Dr. Vinkat Ramana sir, with an experience of more than three decades in HIV care and management. He's also a senior consultant sexologist, dermatologist, and HIV AIDS specialist. He is a professor and HOD of Osmania Medical College, Hyderabad. He is a WHO fellow in the year 1990 and 2009. He is also a president of Indian Andropos Society, vice president of Council of Sex Education and Parenthood International. He is a president of Indian Association for the Study of Sexually Transmitted Diseases and AIDS. Dr. Venkat Ramana, sir, is a member of Academic Committee, Telangana State Medical Council. He has also received Golden Lamp Award for highest honor in the field of Indian sexology. With this, I would like to hand over the session to Dr. Venkat Ramana, sir, who would be educating us on HIV and aging challenge. Also, I would like to thank you everyone for joining us today. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for your kind words. Hello, everyone. Good evening and warm greetings to you from Hyderabad. Now we all know that today we are going to discuss about HIV and aging and associated challenges. Before going to that, now a brief account of how we came to know about this HIV and AIDS. All these things came in news form on 5th of June 1981 from CDC Atlanta, which publishes all the health matters once a week called Morbidity Mortality Weekly Report. So in that, it came out saying that Mysterious cases of five cases of rare pneumonia we, we have noticed in gay men. And that is a shocking news for the entire world. And many people started searching for it, what it is, what could be the future. But nobody knows exactly what is that. Two years after that, two different scientists, one from Luck Mantaker from Pasteur Institute, Paris, and Sinousi, his, her, his colleague, both first detected the causative agent from the lymph nodes of the patient, and they named it as LAV, lymphadenopathy associated virus. Later, later, Robert Gallo from again American Cancer Institute, of just opposite the CDC, he discovered from a virus from the blood of a patient, and he called it as HTLV3. Both the viruses were same. In order to avoid confusion, from 1985 onwards, 
universally we are calling that virus as HIV. This virus now has ruined the entire world and we came out now just we are recovering from that epidemic. In India, if you take the history of Indian history of HIV, in India, it is first we believed that it, HIV won't enter India because it's a religious, pious country, no homosexuality, no gay activity, nothing. But in 1986, it was a big blow, a news from the Madras Medical College and CMC Velour but by Suniti Salman and Nirmala Silapan from April 1986, the first release a news saying that Six commercial sexual workers from Tamil Nadu, Chennai, are came positive. That is a blow. After that, first case of AIDS from Mumbai has is reported due to blood transfusion in May. In August, first case of STD patient. In September, first pregnant woman of antenatal clinic came positive. In December 86, first case from MSM activity. So put together, 1986 in various months, all types of routes of transmission has been declared in India. So these are the two pioneers who declared that HIV has entered India, Sanitya Salman and Nirmala Selapan. So 1986, first case is detected, then government became alarmed and they started a cell called HIV AIDS cell in the Minister of Health and Family Welfare in 1990, 1992 onwards, National AIDS Control Program, one, two, three, four, like they all are going on. Now we have finished the fourth NACP also. This is the virus causing this havoc. This virus, for the practitioners, for doctors, it's a, having a single standard genetic material, hence it is RNA virus. This is having a knob on the RNA, it's called reverse transcriptase. So it becomes a DNA inside the human body. This virus is having knobs at the periphery on the surface of the virus, which are essential for the adhesion to the human CD4 cells. So this virus, how it entered the human kingdom? All these years it was not there. How it came? Then anthropologists, epidemiologists, all social scientists, they could all could search and could come out saying that this virus probably might have spilled from the monkey kingdom to human kingdom. From chimpanzee, HIV-1 has come. From Sutabe monkey, HIV-2 has come. So this HIV-1 is a very virulent virus, fast moving and fast multiplying virus. It has produced a lot of serotypes. In India, subtype serotype C is more common. The components also we are seeing nowadays. Recently, two years back, one more subtype has been detected by Abbott Laboratories who took together 21 serotypes. HIV-2 is detected 1986 from the semen virus, monkey virus, from the Senegal, West Africa. From there it is reported and throughout the world very few cases are there. In India also, handful of cases, not many. It's only till now, it is only five serotypes. So this is a world picture showing predominant serotype in India is C and recombinants are common. In North America, B, South America, B and C. If you look Europe, more B, Africa, it is C, A. So like this, variety of serotypes are ru ruling the entire five continents of the world. That's why getting a vaccine is becoming a difficult. It is not the uniform throughout the world. And another question that rises in the minds of the scientists is, okay, from monkey kingdom, it has come to human kingdom. When would it have been come? So for that, again, they researched and they could find that probably in 1920s, this virus might have spilled into the human kingdom from the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's called Kinshasa now. In the olden days, it is 1980s, 70s, called Congo. So in that country, 
from the monkey kingdom to human animal kingdom to human kingdom this would have been spilled and it has been multiplied in the humans and it has blown in 1981 today these are all the only documented routes of transmission of this virus from person to person sexual route any sexual route, PNO, ANL, PNO, ANL, PNO, ANL, all sexual routes are risky. Blood and blood product, infected blood and blood product transmission. Infected mother becoming pregnant and it can go to child called vertical transmission. And it's more common in the parental drug, IV drug abuse people. And it can be transmitted though minimal in the accident or cuts and needle stick injuries, particularly doctors, nurses, healthcare, dentists, healthcare providers, where we are serving the patients inadvertently, we may get injured. So these are all the documented rules through which this virus can transmit. What are the risk factors? So anybody who is having more than one sex partner is running a risk. So any person having sex with other person who is infected, either let it be vaginal sex, anal sex, without using condom, having sex with these people is again a risky behavior. Sharing of needles to shoot or piercing tattoo needles and doing sex under the influence of the drugs and alcohol is again risky. Getting blood blood transfusion, become pregnant. Another important factor in the metros is sharing of sex toys this is another route. So all these things are risky. To say predominantly in India, predominantly it is sexually transmitted. 90% of infection of HIV through sexual intercourse. Then vertical transmission from infected mother to child. Then infected blood transfusion. Then IV drug abuse. So these are all the common routes. Here I have given, I'm sorry, I'm sincerely apologized because of technical errors. Now I got disconnected. I am reconnecting now. And I sincerely apologize for this. Now in India, documentedly it is 88.2% it is heterosexually transmitted. 2.7% is non-specified. Put together it is 90% sexually transmitted infection. Parent to child transmission is 5%. Infected needle is hardly 2%. Infected blood transmission is hardly 1%. So in order to know what's happening of this disease in the entire globe and each and every country, from 1988 onwards, 1st December, every country in the world is observing as World AIDS Day. Recently, we too observed. So this the recent theme was equalized. And to say today, for every minute, three cases of HIV around the world is occurring. In India, for every 10 minutes, one case of HIV is occurring. You can imagine how many cases are there. Today, India is occupying the third position in the world. South Africa being the number one with the highest number of cases, followed by Mozambique. Then India, if we have now, 2023 lakhs 18,738 cases, prevalence rate of 0.22%. And these are all the various programs. Every year we are doing AIDS awareness programs and World AIDS Day programs. In a, we are sensitizing people in the society and taking a road march. So, this how this virus is very educated and bringing awareness. This virus can be controlled or prevented through three different modes of action. Namely, structural intervention, therapeutic intervention, behavioral intervention. Structural intervention is most of the times the government has to do producing comprehensive sex education, universal condom availability, expanded syringe access, all these things, it's a government duty. So if, what I can say as a doctor wise is correctly, consistently, the condoms are used for every occasion of sexual intercourse. 98% of HIV infections can be prevented. 
that much i can say so these condoms are male and female female condoms are called internal condoms male condoms are called external condoms so these condoms properly used they will do lot of humane benefit for the hiv infection and 80 to 90% for std in protection 92 to 98% in hiv infection therapeutic intervention is mostly in the medical field in the form of pre exposure prophylaxis post exposure prophylaxis treatment as a prevention tap or ppt prevention of parent to child transmission that is preventing mother to child transmission then behavioral intervention is purely depends upon the individuals and the community because practicing abstinence and mutual monogamy is 100% safe procedures no chance of getting if that is not possible then going to a safer sex in the form of using prep or condoms or pep to the next safer sex or best thing is you reporting to the doctor at the earliest because today testing at the earliest in starting the treatment is the key for the success of prolonging the life of these patients they are detectable very easily today because of the science development of the science advancement previously way back in 1988 and 90s we have to wait for 6 to 12 weeks to say whether the person is infected or not the incubation window period was so long now generations wise now for today we are using fourth generation lab test where we can reduce the window period to two weeks only of late we are using nucleic acid nats nucleic acid amplification detection test where the further five days is reduced now today we are unable to say within first week of exposure whether the patient is infected or not from then onwards we are ha- we are having test to say whether a person is infected or not hence early detection today is possible though not from day 1 after day 10th comfortably one can say here this graph is this is slight clearly shows 1981 first detected 1983 causative agent detected 1985 lab test came into picture 1987 first molecule to treat this infection came then multiple molecules came 1996 guidelines came in the form of triple therapy called heart therapy then came the gene genotype resistant test then second generation drugs third generation drugs came then once a daily more tolerable drugs today what we are using so these are the list of drugs that came from 1987 onwards so in the initial days first detected 1981 in the world 1986 in india but we got the world got it 1987 jedovidin we got in 1988 till that time we are only giving counseling and in nutritional supplements to our patients from 1988 onwards who used to treat only with the zidavidin that was the only drug available later came the didenosin then followed by stavidin then followed by lamivudin hence in shall two years it is a monotherapy or dual therapy only what we practiced then came pa is particularly sacvanavir then 199 onwards came multiple drugs as guidelines in the form of heart therapy he is the person david co who has given the champion call man of the year of 1996 and he is the one who introduced guidelines of three drugs at least the minimum combination of three drugs from two different families that's called drug cocktail so these are the combinations that are available in those days before 19 zidovidin lamivudin neverapin zidovidin stavudin lamivudin neverapin these are like this come various combinations of nnrtis and protease inhibitors then came other drugs like efavarange then second generation came tenofovir then viral load test came resistance all these things are added thanks to our indian pharma companies who could do fixed drug combinations at the cheapest available i can say at the proudly i can say indian pharma companies even today are catering to the needs of 50% of the global needs 
many countries are using our Indian pharma company drugs. So these fixed drug combinations came and it became easy because initially patient has to consume, has to consume 16 to 20 tablets and capsules. Then later became two to three. Now today it is only single pill that is user friendly. Hence the adherence rates will increase. That adherence rates and early detection will make the patient to recover faster and live longer. So these are all the various combination of drugs in the second generation, third generation. Why this combination is needed means by combining the two to three drugs of different classes, we are reducing the side effect profile, toxicity profile. We are preventing the or delaying the resistance and we are synergizing the effects of all these drugs. So the drug cocktail will be more effectively suppress and kill the virus. That's why combination of drugs are advocated. So these are all the drugs which we used. When in 1996 onwards, guidelines said, don't treat all the patients, treat only CD4 200 or below. So we lost many patients because not treating them. Then guidelines changed. Anybody 350 to 500, you treat. Some more patients improved. Then guidelines came after 500, you treat. Some more patients improved. Half late, the WHO has given the guidelines saying that test and treat. From 2016 onwards, any patient, you test it, if positive, immediately start treatment, negative, give proper counseling and ask him to remain negative. So test and treat policy came in the world 2016 onwards. In India, it is implemented from 2017 onwards. And we are now today practiced in the private sector and the government sector, test and treat policy. Once the patient comes to us, we'll be testing. If it comes positive, immediately we are subjecting for the treatment. We are attaching to the treatment protocols after investigating and what are the comorbid conditions evaluation. So these are the list of family of drugs, NRTS, NRTS, PAs, fusion inhibitors, CCR5, NSTs. All these things, judiciously, it is the knowledge of the treating physician that decides which type of drug cocktails to suits the particular patient. So it has to be decided based on the lab investigations as well as based on the his, uh, lifestyle. Diabetic, hypertension, thyroid, alcoholic, and uh, nutritional defects. So, so many things has to be taken into consideration. So test and treat policy is, has saved many lives from the pregnancy transmission and detection of the early HIV infection, AIDS defining conditions, so that we can prolong the quality of life of these patients. Of late in 2018, this crime meeting in Amsterdam has declared to the world, very big pleasant news came saying that if you are able to keep your patients undetectable, then he is untransmittable to the other partner through sexual intercourse. This was a very big news. And this called U is equal to U, that is undetectable is equal to untransmittable. Science has validated it. So if within six months, if our patients, because of the early diagnosis and the proper scientific treatment, and if the patients are able to adhere to these drugs, within six months, their viral load will become undetectable. If it is maintained undetectable for another six months, the chances of giving infection by sexual intercourse to the partner is risk zero. So this clearly has been validated by science. Hence, this is making the people to have normal sex to raise the family also. Today, HIV positive and HIV negative couple, they are now producing children. So their ambition is fulfilled now because of you is you. As a result of this, my second generation, third generation HIV drugs and we achieving you is equal to you very early. Now the death rate has come down drastically and uh, new infections in the community has down has come down drastically see the death rate 78 percent decrease over the seven years see the new cases and the new deaths have come down from 2002 onwards drastically so this clearly shows today so this is american graph showing from 1996 onwards the death rate is falling so this again, new infections has coming down. 
So this craft speaks a volumes about this. As a result of using these drugs continuously with early detection and the continuous drug usage, the death, new infections are coming down in the society. Deaths are coming down in the society. People are living longer in a very good lifestyle. So once upon a time, when the diagnosis of HIV is viewed as a life de death sentence, today, gone those days, now it is a chronic manageable medical problem. So this is possible because of the early detection, early treatment, continuous treatment and usage by the patients. So this, this, these factors will determine the people living longer in a healthy way. Hence, my friends, highly active antiretroviral therapy has changed from HIV inevitably fatal to a manageable disease. Today, people with HIV can live long and lead healthy lives. This is possible by routine HIV screening. That's why I'm stressing it too much. Early diagnosis is a key. So for that, we have to adapt medical people as well as government has to adapt our HIV screening. The more we screen, the more you detect and the start treatment early, that is the key for prolonging the quality of life of these patients. So early detection is the key so that we use you early pickup of cases. Since now the people are living longer, it is our duty to respect them. Let them, they deserve to live with dignity. So people living with HIV AIDS, they deserve to age with dignity. So in order to achieve this, from 2014 onwards, one of the longest survivors of the patient has thought, why should not we felicitate these people? So from 2014 onwards, HIV Long-Term Survivors Awareness Day has started. That started on June 5th purposefully because the first case of HIV reported by CDC from MMRWR is on the June 5th only. For that sake, they started this Awareness Day on June 5th. This is the 10th year we are observing this Long-Term Survivors Awareness Day. This year, the theme is Mobilize to Thrive, Prioritize the Quality of Life. With this theme, and fifth, just four, three days back, we observed in our college, and we have put the here flexes in the clinics, and we educated people. So this is Tej Anderson. He is the one who started this awareness program. He is the one of the longest survivor in America. So these are all the days their awareness programs they are doing, various types of programs. And today, if you look at it, the prevalence rates, 25% of all people in the world now, they are living longer. So this amounts to 5.8 million people. So you can imagine 58 lakh patients are now 50 years old with 20 to 25 years of HIV infection. So that is the prevalence rate now. Seniors are increasing year by year because of the early detection and undetect, uh, achieving the undetectable level within six months and maintaining that it for further made it possible. So for them, for these long survivors, certain priorities if we are able to give, they live healthy life, productive life. Make the quality of life of these long survivors a true priority. They are demanding universal treatment access to help. Culturally aware mental health, because many people are having a lot of psychological problems. Some lost their partner, some lost their properties, some lost of their health. So like that, some are in depression, some are in anxiety, some are in revenge attitude, some are in post-traumatic stress disorder. Like that, play a variety of psychological problems. So we have to address that. 
and who have overcome the challenges of poverty and economic insecurity and of discrimination that is very very important who have to fight the discrimination that is very very important so that they can live they can mingle freely with the society so the new antiviral drugs has made a paradigm shift but at the same time do not mitochondrial toxicities are there for the which are there for first generation second generation this third and fourth generation drugs which we are using they are also having a little amount of certain side effects for example tenofovir is having problems on the kidney and bone abacavir is having a risk of cardiovascularity boosted protease inhibitors are notorious for the dyslipidemia and insulin resistance integrase inhibitors are linked with weight gain and neuropsychiatric symptoms so all these things has to be addressed we have to weigh the benefits and the risks and we have to monitor the patients properly so balancing this benefit effects of the virus and the immune system is very very important so that we can they can lead normal healthy life at the same time we have to counsel them the patients the long time survivors should not be if they adapt to sedentary behavior if they adapt to lack of sleep if they develop smoking and alcohol habits and junk foods and fast foods and they are more stressful they will age early with a lot of bone joints neurocognitive cardiovascular problems so not a healthy aging if they develop positive in my attitude by our counseling like doing a routine regular exercise every day healthy activities timely sleep and maintain a quality of life appropriate nutrition healthy balanced diet relaxation techniques these people apart from along with adequate maintenance of the treatment they can lead normal healthy life and they can age normally so that is the beauty so not only early detection not only early treatment but also patient has to be counseled and has to be informed or make them aware the positive attitude towards life that is another priority and at the same time many patients of my patients i am telling here many patients are feeling lonely because due to death of their partner or they are afraid to have sexual activity with the partner because of this past trauma or tra transfer of this infections i have more than uh, 25 to 30 patients where wife positive husband negative or husband positive wife negative we call it as zero discordant couples so for them if the patient is achieved undetectable level happily they can have sex because sexual transmission is zero when the patient attains undetectable if not attained undetectable patient partner can be started with prep or patient can use condo so that they can have healthy life so they are more psychologically traumatized because of lack of sexual activity so the counseling that plays very important role for this long time survivors like risk avoidance counseling risk reduction counseling this is very very important this is how this avoidance counseling risk counseling reduction counseling this is the chart so touching kissing oral sex they are all less risky will not transmit much insertive vaginal and receptive oral is some amount of risk is there that's why classified as less risky receptor vaginal is risky insertive anal is more risky receptive anal is highest risky that's why you have to counsel the patients which type of orientation they are having which type of sexual activity they are practicing what is their viral load level what is their in general physical health level what is the kind of coordination between the partner both are infected one are infected one is not infected so based on this things we will be we may be giving only outer codes that is kissing and touching or inner codes with condom inner codes with prep so all these things differ from person to person patient to patient couple to couple based on these factors at the same time we how to counsel them 
get tested and treated for other STDs also because presence of other STDs will increase the viral load of HIV. That's why proper treatment of other STDs addressing particularly herpes and syphilis is very important to keep the viral load undetectable. That's very, very important. So these are all the things which you have to counsel for these patients to make them to live longer in a healthy way. How I can protect my baby? This is a positive woman asking me, how can I protect, protect my baby? So there are ways we will counsel, we we'll did proper treatment. Now today, adequate counseling, achieving the viral load undetectable, happily we can deliver the patients. The transmission rate is just negligible today. We have to treat the infant also in the form of exposure, pre expo prophylaxis also. So when we properly take care, today we can produce unhealthy children. That's why the pediatric HIV has come down drastically. And there are some countries in the world, they have achieved zero. We have to thank Bangkok, that's the first country in the world, achieve PPT zero. So what I want to stress upon is we should need more HIV testing as a routine as we do for CPP, ESR and cholesterol. So that is a very important thing. So many of the medical problems now faced by the people living with this HIV is more HIV related and aging related problems. That's why all these problems put together we are now calling as AIDS survival syndrome. So people who are living longer, they are having certain issues and all these issues are called ASS, that is AIDS Survivor Syndrome. Here we have to address because of certain drugs are producing either bone or kidney or heart or dyslipidemias which we have to address or these patients because of other social factors, interpersonal factors, they are having a lot of depression, anxiety, emotional numbness, survival guilt insomnia, hypervigilance, hopelessness, or they are resorting either to smoking and alcohol or substance abuse. So all these things has to be addressed. Then only we can give them a healthy, fruitful, long living along with HIV. So these are all the various modalities which are advocating. Ask, uh, uh, we are asking them to stop alcohol or at least limit the alcohol. Definitely stop smoking. Use condoms. And the advice prep, if your partner is not willing, keep your medical consultations in time. Take your HIV medications every day, regularly, continuously. And at least have 20 minutes to 30 minutes exercise, be active. They eat healthy. So, and have a nice sleep. So, all through these things, early detection, linking to the care, achieving the undetectable level, Two benefits are there apart from not only prolonging their survival rates, improving their quality, death rate will come down in the society, new infections also can come down in the society. So this how HIV screening, diagnosis, linking to the care and prolonging survival and improving the quality is going on. Hence my friends, to conclude, there is urgent need for the Addressing these issues for these people who are living longer, particularly psychological issues as well as the issues associated with the drugs. So meeting the needs of these people with aging on the path of ending this HIV epidemic, the patient-doctor relationship plays a very important role. So the stronger the bond between the patient and doctor will definitely achieve this. We can achieve this long survival in a healthy survival way. Thank you. Thank you for patient listening. Back to you, Ma. Yes, sir. So if you could allow, there are a few questions uh, which then we can have. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Uh, question is, when does a person have AIDS? Uh, when the day one, the virus enters the body, it attacks the immune system and starts killing the CD4 cells. 
So as the years passes on, the CD4 cells will fall down, the count will come down, come down. When it reaches a critical level of around 200 cells, that person is labeled as AIDS patient. Any patient who is having 200 and below is highly risky. So that is AIDS stage. A person who is maintaining above 200 is HIV positive case. Yes, sir. Well said. Um, so the second question, next question is, um, how long we need to take the medicines? This is how to take regularly, continuously till vaccine becomes a reality. Till that time we have to take. Taking medicines alone is 75% to in my knowledge. 25% keeping healthy mind and body. Oh, avoiding alcohol, avoiding smoking, keeping other comorbidities under control like diabetes, hypertension, thyroid. All these things will play a very big role in making them to live healthily and grow healthily along with HIV. Yes, sir. So as advised by sir, taking regularly uh, the medications will help. Uh, next question is, sir, um, how the aging with HIV affects the person? Aging with HIV is now we achieved. Thanks to our multi uh, heart therapy and early detection. Now the question here is, they how to age in a healthy way. Aging in a healthy way is again a burden to the society, burden to them also. So in order to achieve aging healthily, they have to practice a positive attitude, which I told them. At the same time, keeping the viral load undetectable forever. Then it is possible they can, they can age healthily and they can have, many of my patients are having a productive life. They are working, they are, they are earning, and they are you know, now living with their families and they are happily living like any other person. The only guilt is they, they only know that they, are, they have to take medicine by night. Otherwise, it is as equal to as an, an, an uninfected patient. In the weight wise, appearance wise, everything. It has to be you is equal to you. You, yes. <laughs> yes. What message would you like to send to younger people living with HIV or people who are newly diagnosed? People not infected with HIV always don't get infected. Don't you? My suggestion is practice abstinence. If not possible, have sex with monogamous one to one only, not every day one, one to one forever. If that is also not possible, then either go for prep or condom usage. If that is not a possible, accidentally occurred, then immediately consult doctor, you will start PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis. If that also uh, time has lapsed, then early detection, going for testing is very, very important. Early detection and early treatment will make the person healthy very early. We can keep the virus under un undetectable within short period. Yes, sir, true. Uh, next question is, uh, what is the role of nutrition and uh, nutritional supplements in managing HIV? They, are, they play a very important role. Because today everybody we are eating, including me also, tomato, tomato, this syndrome has increased. Nobody is cooking in the house. Everything is coming through parcels only. That contains a lot of unsaturated fatty acids, which is not a healthy diet. Eating once in a way, okay, not on a regular basis. Hence, eating a healthy, having a sound sleep of six to eight hours, making the body mobility like 20 to 30 minutes of walk, brisk walking or exercise will play a vital role in making the person to age healthily. That's why nutrition supplement definitely play a role which should contain more proteins and trace elements like zinc and selenium and all vitamins are very much needed. Yes, sir. 
Um, so the next question is, uh, are there any chances of cure in future? Unless a vaccine becomes a reality, the only cure possibility is TAP, treatment as prevention. So those people who are maintaining a virus undetectable is equal to cure, not but not the cure, equal to cure, nearer to the cure. The cure is only, vaccine is the only. Today in the world, there are three types of cure patients are there, called elite controllers, functional cure, sterilizing cure. Elite controllers are very few people. Even today, only two women patients are there. They are able to maintain undetectable levels without any treatment. Okay. Functional cure is TAP by taking the drugs and keeping the virus undetectable forever. They are functionally cured. Sterilizing cure is accidentally came and that is practiced. Now three patients are there in the world who are totally cured. This is because of the bone marrow transplants. The bone marrow taken from the patients who are resistant for this virus, HIV. Certain individuals in the world, to the extent of less than 1% of people, are having genetic deletions, abnormalities in the chromosomes. That's why they are resistant for this virus. So those people's blood, bone marrow, can make these people will become resistant. Okay, so so this, this we cannot be practiced in, in a very big way because mm -hmm. it is having a lot of risks involvement in the bone marrow transplants also. It's not that easy job. Only That's why only three patients today are developed to cure sterilizing cure. Otherwise, functional cure, that is treatment as prevention, is the only cure now, presently, until the vaccines becomes a reality. Okay, sir. So the key message is treatment as prevention is the correct. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Uh, next question is, can a person take break from HIV medicine? Better not to take unless it is a compelling. There should be a reason because these medicines are ca causing, endangering the life of the patient. Certain situations we will be stopping temporarily. We used to stop in the second generation drugs producing lactic acidosis. Okay. Half late, the, the third and fourth generation no such the no mitochondrial toxicity, no lactic acidosis. I have not seen for the last uh, 11 to 12 years. Hence, there is no question of stopping it unless the patient is developing other problems. Say, for example, patient develops myocardial infarction. Those uh, patient is in the theater or in the ICU. He forgets these tablets or the doc doctors will tell, don't take those in for time being. When you come out of this problem, then we'll start. So like that, they are discontinuing. Otherwise, there is no reason to discontinue. If, if any patient discontinues, the virus will develop resistance to these drugs and these drugs will not work. Mm. That the patient should know and it is we who should counsel them properly. Okay. So the message is clear that one should not discontinue the medicine. Yes. And the next question is, what are the long-term toxicities of the medications? Yes, of late, new, medica new drugs that are available are having less toxicities. Previously, first generation, second generation, lot of toxicities. That's why patients used to skip the doses. They used to change the doctors. That's why they died. Lot of death rate, mortality was very high. In the initial days of 90s and up to 95, 96. Okay. Because of the lot of mitochondrial toxicities. Of hmm. late, the drugs which we are using now, they are having no doubt. They are not 100% safe. These toxicities are not mitochondrial. They are producing toxicities on the bone mineral density, toxicities on the kidney function. And toxicity in the form of weight gain is there. Mm -hmm. Toxicity in the form of uh, insulin resistance and dyslipidemias. These are all the toxicity which we are facing. This we are addressing by changing the drugs, changing the families of the drugs. These are all easily manageable today. The, what the toxicities are there? Easily manageable. 
Okay, sir. All right. Uh, so the last question is: Can you so uh, can you throw some light on quality of life challenges and its management? Yes. So these patients definitely deserve a better quality of life like any other human being. So when a person is aging with HIV, he should age in a healthy way. What the challenges now today they are facing is continuous drug supply in the government sector. To purchase the drugs in the private sector, financial security. So, which these two has to be addressed properly. Then, because of psychological reactions they are developing, many are resorting to alcoholism or smoking, which has to be addressed. There is a need for it. So, people, because they are aging, age-related comorbid conditions also they will get, mm -hmm. like osteoarthritis, hypertension, diabetes. So, they have to take those drugs also. Mm -hmm. It becomes a polypharmacy. Mm -hmm. So, when the patient is putting this drug, that drug, everything into stomach, there will be a fighting between the drugs in the stomach. That's called drug-to-drug -drug interactions, which we have to address. How much gap should be there? What drugs when to be taken? At what time of the day they should be taken? Mm -hmm. So, that's a real challenge. At the same time, I have two to, I have two to three patients where they are 70 plus now. They are suffering with cognitive dysfunction, dementia. They are forgetting they are taking the same drugs twice and thrice a day. So there's a real issue where attendance has to be counseled so that that challenge that has to be addressed. Yes. So they're like this, plenty of issues are there which they are facing. All these things has to be addressed to make them age healthily and normal like any other person in the society. Okay, correct, sir. So, sir, actually, thank you for uh, taking us through entire uh, presentation and also throwing more light on what is HIV when it has been first diagnosed. Uh, also covering on what are its types, serotypes, prevention, and also throwing more light on HIV and aging. And also giving a key message to the audience that HIV is not a death sentence, but a chronic manageable disease, which also patients can uh, live a long and healthy life by early diagnosis and also uh, routine HIV monitoring. So, sir, thank you. Thank and you. also I would like to thank the audiences for joining us today. Thank you.